Welcome to this brand new episode of the Marketing Technology Podcast. This podcast is hosted by Mark van Horek and myself, Elias Krum, and brought to you by Marketing Guys, the MarTech agency based out of the Netherlands. Welcome to this new episode of the Marketing Technology Podcast. Today, I'm having Hanna Siljemark. She's from Sweden, and she's the Marketing Technology Manager at BIM Object, which is a software or a SaaS company in, based in Sweden. Um, and again, she's the marketing technology manager over there. So welcome, Hanna. Could you give a little introduction on yourself? So what do you do um, and how do you, how did you end up in the position where you are now? Oh, thank you for having me. Um, I, I started here at BIM Object for almost one and a half year ago. Uh, before that, I, I worked at an, another SaaS company here in Sweden called InRiver. Um, where I started as an SDR and later on I moved over to marketing and that's where where I'm currently at. So I'm doing more of the tech, tech part of marketing. Cool. So you're having both sales and marketing experience. Yeah. And um, do I understand right that BIM Object is a, is a global operating company? So you're selling software worldwide? Yes, that's correct. So where the HQ is in Malmö and then we have offices uh, globally. Cool. So we're going to talk about being a marketing technology manager today and some of the challenges challenges and learnings that you had during, let's say, the past year. I'm looking forward for this discussion. So um, it's going to be a pretty informal chat. So for the listeners, we're going to, we're going to talk about um, how it is for Hanna to be that manager and also maybe inspire people. Uh, other marketing technology managers uh, to 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 let them give them some inspiration on uh, which tools are used, what kinds of things you do to measure success, etc. So um, to start with with those challenges, um, what what have been some of the challenges you had as a martech professional the last year, maybe during the COVID era or um, the recovery of COVID, because it has has been a little different in Sweden, I've underst- understood. So what, what have, have been challenges? Well, well, for us, it's been, I, I started like three weeks before COVID came. Uh, so I was in the office for like three weeks, and then we started to work from home. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I started, I think I was the second person in, in the global marketing team. So before that, we had marketing um, marketing people in in the regions like one marketing manager per region uh, so when i started like the big challenge was for for to build this global team and to have it here in in malmö and hq and like have everyone work in the same way and change how we work and how how to measure things and what tools do we need because previously all all the regional marketeers had their own way of working. Uh, and now we needed to centralize all that uh, here in Malmö and uh, collaborate uh, also and uh, mm-hmm. not being in the office. <laughs> so yeah, that was, that was a challenge. I, I can imagine. And it, it was a challenge for a lot of uh, people. You're fortunate enough to be in a uh, IT company, of course, so change yeah. might have been a little easier than people, for example, in manufacturing companies or whatsoever. Um, mm. What kind of uh, technologies do you use at the moment? Because you said or indicated that the global or the local teams on a global basis had their own technologies. What what does your Martech stack look like? Yeah, so so our like our um, uh, single source of truth, or what we say. Uh, is our uh, CRM. We use Salesforce uh, for that. And then we have changed out a lot of the softwares that we have previously. So I think the first one that we changed to after this transition was uh, Acton as our marketing automation tool. Um, So that's where we keep our lead scoring and uh, do our uh, nurture campaigns. um, Yeah, and have all that in there. Um, but we push all the data we have into Salesforce because that's where we look at the dashboards, look at the reports, see how how we perform. Um, so that is like our core core software. Okay. Um, yeah. And yeah, then did... we recently got Zoom webinar, 
Mm-hmm. Um, we had another um, had another webinar tool before, but for me, it's really important to have the integrations and the tool that we had. We didn't have a good integration to either Salesforce or Acton with it. Um, so to get these lead scores, if you have attended a registered webinar and just automatically be populated into Salesforce, that was a struggle we had before. So now when we change to Zoom, we have that uh, integrated to act on. They get a lead scoring if they attend and they, if they register or uh, or all of that. And then it gets into Salesforce straight away and to the right SDR. So integrations is really important. So a, a question about that. Uh, later, let's let's say the integration you mentioned, uh, Zoom and Acton and Salesforce. Um, yeah. If you're integrating those, you could even go as far as using, let's say, answers from polls or answers from mm-hmm. questions uh, to personalize follow up. Maybe using Salesforce or or Acton Marketing Automation. Do you go that far, or do you personalize based on what people actually behave like in webinars? Uh, not not right now. When we just purchased Zoom for a couple of uh, weeks or a couple of months ago, so we are building it up. But mm-hmm. yeah, that's that's the goal to to personalize even further and have those Q and A's and and polls and and pull data out of the behavior, and so we can be more personalized in the in the reach out afterwards from the SDRs and so on. Cool. So, yeah, yeah, I've I've seen that that being used in practice for a couple of reasons. So first of all, to personalize follow-up. So yeah. if you're if you're doing a uh, a poll during a webinar and you're asking, uh, are you currently using any kind of construction software? Yes, no, no, but I intend to within a couple of months. So based on, on those questions, you would publicly t- typically get a graph on the screen during the webinar, like X percent set this or a pie yeah. graph or whatsoever. Um, yeah. But that data can also be used to personalize follow-up because someone that said no could be sent something else as a follow-up than someone that said yes. Mm. So that's for personalized follow-up. But the other reason is for lead scoring. Yeah. Uh, so for what we've seen is that, let's say if, if you have a webinar and, and let's uh, just assuming 100 people are present or logged into the webinar, you don't, don't automatically want to send those 100 to SDRs that are going to call on them, right? So you typically want to send the hot leads that said, uh, no, but I intend to within six months, I intend to buy this. Yeah, exactly. So we try to build these nurture flows. And and like you said, like if if they are more a harder lead, um, mm-hmm. they should go like they should be, the, the SDR should reach out uh, to them. So when you have a follow up after someone was in a webinar, so how do you send those to the SDR now? What does that alignment look like? Uh, right now we have they go into Salesforce straight away, but we try to keep them um, until they have a certain amount in lead score until they reach out. So we try to nurture them a bit more from from marketing, uh, and also like to see if if they are the right target group because we want people to attend attend our our webinars, but they can also be our like end users that are not the people that we try to sell to. Um, so in the first step, we have, they might be ACOs, as we call them, that's the designers and uh, engineers that like do the designs with our BIM object uh, that we have on the platform. And those are our end users. So they are not the people that we are selling to, but they are allowed to be in the webinars, of course. Mm-hmm. So they go still go into Salesforce. And then, um, then we uh, look at everyone that came in and see which one are the good target group and so on. And then the, with the right lead scoring and have the right industry segment and all of that, th- those goes to the SDRs and they follow up on that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you're, you're using a couple of tools in that MarTech stack, mm-hmm. um, Salesforce, act on zoom for, for, for webinars. Um, yeah. Is there any other tooling that you're using? within your MarTech stack? Because the typical marketer uses like, if if I start asking them, they're like, yeah, Mm -hmm. I I used five, but we usually usually end up like using 30. So what what kind of other tools are you using? Uh, Well, of course, it's our our CMS for our website. Um, Mm -hmm. So that we use uh, Umbraco. uh, And and we have an integration with Umbraco to LanguageWire. Because we are a global company, we need a lot of translations. Um, So we have a LanguageWire translation service there. 
Um, and we also use on our website, we use the forms from Acton. Mm -hmm. um, so those we have on, on the website. Um, we previously also purchased uh, Acton Advanced Social Media. So before we had another social media tool, but now we have changed to this one also because of the lead scoring, it was better integrated with all the other tools. Um, so that was something that we, we recently got. And then of course we have tools that look at the behavior on the website. We have mouse flow, hot jar. Um, we have SEMrush for uh, SEO, mm -hmm. uh, Google Tag Manager. Uh, and we'll look at uh, Google Analytics, of course. Um, I think that's that's the the top ones at least. And then we have we use Slack internally for for uh, for the company, and we have a lot of integrations with, with like Zapier into Slack, so we can follow like um, uh, hot leads coming in or who is attending the webinar and so on, just to give the company some kind of pulse of what is happening, uh, so they can be like in the loop and see even if you're not maybe in in marketing so even if you're in sales or even finance you might be interested and in see just how, how it how's it going like is are we getting any leads mm -hmm. <laughs> into the mm -hmm. system so yeah so um uh, just just a couple of questions that came up after you mm -hmm. shared that 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 martech stack um you you refer to forms uh, that you're using uh, acton mm -hmm. forms so your yeah. marketing automation tool uh, those forms typically from marketing automation also include stuff like progressive profiling, uh, yeah. pre-filled, et cetera. Are you using those functionalities? Yes, we are. Um, pre-filled, we are. And the progressive profiling, we are starting to explore a little bit more. Um, so, yeah, we're using that. And it's uh, it's really good to have that sort of, you don't have like 20 fields uh, on the website straight away, you start with maybe asking for an email or your first name and, uh, and the basics. And then if they come back, you can ask for maybe uh, how many employees are you at the company or, or what industry segment are you working in uh, and so on. So we can populate the data in, in, in Salesforce. That's, that's the goal that we have to have more data quality. And well, the best option, of course, is for the customer self to add that information than to buy information somewhere or something like that. So, yeah, that's really mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's one of the key areas and challenges for marketing technology professionals for 2022. Um, mm -hmm. That data integrity, have yeah. your data as a single point of, of uh, truth, like mm -hmm. with Salesforce is in your case. That's one of the challenges. And the other one is integrating the tools. Um, yeah. You also refer to the advanced social media mm -hmm. uh, module, which you're using. Uh, that's also an Acton uh, product, um, yeah. very comparable to uh, tools like Octopost or Sprout Social, I, I, I guess, for the uh, listeners that don't know the solution. Um, one of the things that I know uh, are in that tool are things like um, advocacy. So measuring mm -hmm. how your colleagues, how they contribute to the social media goals of the company. Are you using that? Using that, And if so, how does that work for you? Uh, we previously started with it, I think a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and I think the outcome has been good. Like uh, our social media manager can prepare these social media posts because a lot of the time, salespeople or SDRs, and then they have a hard time maybe to figure out what they should post themselves. Like, what should I write? They, they are not marketeers. So it's so our social media manager, he, he prepares these posts and he, he gives them access to like rechair these and, uh, and, and stuff like that. So yeah, it's been, it's been good so far. Yeah. So, and, and the software actually shows you like, for example, Octopost does, and this, this social module is based on, on Octopost, but um, it, it shows you how uh, your colleagues are performing online. Mm. Like how are they, uh, how are they, how are their LinkedIn posts doing, et cetera. So especially mm. in the B2B environment, this is something yeah. very, very, um, very useful, I guess, in measuring, which brings me to the next topic, because you mentioned you're 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 using marketing automation, you're you're using analytic tools, um, CRM, marketing mm -hmm. automation, um, you're using analytics, um, SEO tooling like SEMrush. 
So all those tools are typically having their own little dashboards and KPI dashboards. I'm a fan of SEM Ross as well. So we're using it internally as well. But are you using any some kind of a dashboard to, to combine that data? And maybe to start with, how do you measure for success? Uh, well, for, in my case, as a marketing technology manager, it's like I, my success is that the other team members can can reach their goals. So I have a lot of dashboards and reports um, that I keep track of. Uh, I'm a bit of an operations person, mm-hmm. so trying to keep track of this to if if like a lead generation is really important for us. Um, And like, if we're going to double the MQLs for next year, I have to work backwards. Like, what do we need um, to make that happen? And how, what works today? So we need to track all this data somewhere. And that's that's one of the big things that we have done this year uh, is, okay, we need to have just identifying these KPIs. Like, what is a lead? What is an MQL? What is an SQL and all of these um, points in the funnel and how how can we track that and see if okay if we're gonna have double the mqls for next year do do we need uh, the double the amount of leads or can we have a better conversion rate uh, mm-hmm. and try to dig down in these numbers like okay webinars are performing really good in this region but maybe not in the other region or uh, case studies works really good in one region so we need this data and these dashboards uh, to to dig into that. So, so that's what we're doing a lot right now, just looking at the numbers and trying to configure Salesforce to save these data so we can look at it. So, yeah. Okay, and uh, you mentioned uh, at the beginning of the interview that Salesforce is your single point of truth. Does mm. that mean that you're building your dashboards in Salesforce? Yeah, both. Both. Uh, we have Salesforce dashboard because it's a, they have the dashboard tools in, mm-hmm. in there. But when you look in Salesforce, it's more like this is how it looks right now. So it's hard to compare to like how did it look last year and, and stuff like that. So then we have um, another BI tool outside uh, outside of Salesforce that that we can more dig into and look uh, and connect it to even our finance softwares or um, our, our product to see, okay, these customers, they have these amount of products on the website and so on. So Salesforce can only look at like the sales and marketing funnel and uh, and we can dig into that. But then we have to pull these numbers and all this data out into the software to look at the whole picture for the, for the company. Oh, yeah. One of the things that I really like about that integration of Salesforce with marketing automation, so either it being Acton or Marketo or HubSpot, um, is that you can really visualize that whole funnel and also Mm. see how many basically unidentified web visitors converted into leads, opportunities and deals. Um, on a real-time basis, you can even see how long it takes through the stages, et cetera, on a real-time basis. I really like that. So I, I figure that you have uh, worked that out somewhere as well within the tooling. Yeah. And and one, I don't know if other CRMs have this issue as well, but Salesforce, for example, have, it's really hard to pull uh, a report or uh, look at the numbers from, from lead to account to uh, opportunities and all that, because it's too many objects in one um, mm-hmm. and like look at the conversion rates and all of that. So uh, what I have built is a, a custom object in Salesforce that track all this data, like when did they and it came in as an inbound lead, what date was that and what campaign, um, what marketing campaign um, pushed that lead into Salesforce. And then we can look at all these, when was the MQL date and when was the SQL date and, and all of these steps. So we have a different object for that. So we can look at the funnel uh, in a whole, like how long does it take from an inbound lead to, to, uh, close, to close to one deal or, um, or all of those measurements that is quite hard to look at for uh, in, in the B2B at least, because you're not one person. You can be a company with five employees and the first one came in in January. The next person attended a webinar in, in March 
and so on. So to have that, um, we we made we made a custom object to look at. So we have all that data. Love it, love it. Because I've, and I think you're so much further than a lot of marketers. So um, for listeners out there that want to ask more. Um, on this topic to Hannah, I'll share your LinkedIn profile in the show notes so they can link you on LinkedIn and, and ask those questions. Um, a final question that I had, because you're giving us a great insight <laughs> and, and view into your daily life and, and work as a marketing technology manager. Um, what has been your biggest learning this year? Um I think it's, I think I have two. <laughs> I think it's like one, one shoe doesn't fit all. Like it, there's even how much we love to copy paste in marketing. Um, I don't think there's a magic formula that you can just copy paste to every organization and every team. Mm-hmm. So you need to like, just try and start somewhere and just evaluate as you go along. Uh, what I think is great uh, nowadays is that you don't sign up for uh, at least most, most tools you don't sign up for like, oh, a three-year agreement. You can just try it out. Just start somewhere because at least if you are a, a startup company or something, you need to move fast. So to sit and just evaluate a lot of tools forever and ever, mm-hmm. then then you're not going any, anywhere. So what I did was I just like went in. I got like, we need a webinar tool. We need a social media tool. We need all those basic stuff. Uh, and if it doesn't work, well, change then. Mm-hmm. So, so we had a previous another uh, social media tool. We didn't uh, feel that uh, it was a fit because of the integration uh, things. So then we just changed it. So, so I think that's one of my learnings, is to like just start somewhere. Um, and also the second thing is to just go back and re- reevaluate and look at the tech stack you have. It doesn't matter if you get like. Uh, 10 new new tools if you don't change the way you work and look at the process in the company. So if you were going to have, uh, we're going to sell this this amount, amount more next year, well, it doesn't, if we push in 10 more tools into this tech stack, that mm-hmm. doesn't help anything if you don't change how you work and what is the goal and how can we optimize everything. And just all the tools you already have you don't use all the features in those tools and they they release new features all the time. So just go back and look at it and see, is there anything more we can do with this tool or just use what you have in, before you start like getting new stuff into the mix. Oh, and that's so true because... You know, what? How is that saying? A fool with a tool is still a fool. <laughs> yeah, if, if, exactly. And you can. There is new shiny objects around the corner every day. New Martech mm. stuff comes out every day. And although I do share with you that you know you can always try it, and if it doesn't work, you can stop using it. But there is mm. so much uh, a functionality within the tools that we already have. Yeah. I often compare it to um, Photoshop, where a lot of people are using Adobe Photoshop. Uh, but mm. they're only using like three percent of the capabilities, exactly. um, and you know that's that's just specifically true with with uh, marketing automation and CRM tooling. So mm. so many things are possible, um, and uh, a lot is unknown. So there's also a lot of stuff to be done, or marketing uh, education to be done by the technology providers themselves to actually educate the users on what they actually can use the software for. So. Mm. Hannah, thank you very much for being on the show. Um, I will you. share a link to your LinkedIn profile, uh, to uh, BIM Objects website, um, and uh, the, this way listeners will always know where to find you. If you're a listener and you're linking Hannah on LinkedIn, please make sure you add a note indicating that you've uh, heard Hannah on the uh, podcast. Otherwise, she might think it's spam. Uh, a lot of people in marketing know that these they get messages and LinkedIn requests every day. So please, please indicate that. Um, Hanna, it was a pleasure having you. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Marketing Technology Podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, please leave us a review on your favorite podcast platform or iTunes. Also, if you want to be a guest or know someone that should be a guest to our show, shoot me an email on e.crum at marketingguys.nl. Thank you for listening.